And from the time we arrived, uh, it became clear to us that there was some uncertainty among the growers about which variety they should be planting. Obviously, the Federation has a very strong program, Renovation with Castillo and Rust Resistant Varieties, uh, and that was gaining ground in Nariño. In our dialogues with them, we came to understand that there was some concern about Castillo's cup quality, uh, and there was some encouragement of continuing to grow traditional varieties, primarily uh, Caturra. And so uh, we decided, wow, we really need to be able to give a better answer to those growers, uh, about to their questions about what varieties they should be planting. And uh, hopefully we can also help the buyers make uh, more informed decisions about uh, their, atti- their attitudes about Columbia's coffee varieties. We actually had one objective, which was to inform decision making in three different spaces. Uh, on the farm, where growers are trying to decide what variety to plant. In the marketplace, where buyers are trying to better understand the quality uh, attributes of each of Columbia's coffee varieties. Uh, and potentially, um, in the policy making space where the Federation has uh, a lot of sway over what, uh, what varieties uh, growers plant. For the marketplace, I think the most important finding of the study is that Castillo can be very good. Um, not only did Castillo have a similar average cupping score to Katura, but it had a number of uh, results over 90 points. But the fact that Katura couldn't get uh, a decisive separation in terms of cupping scores from Castillo says that the two varieties produce similar cupping scores. And so a grower who needs to decide which variety to plant um, can get rust resistance with Castillo and not compromise in any statistically significant way their potential of producing a high cup score, um, that's pretty attractive. So I think um, at the at the farm level, we need to really think hard about the varietal selection process. And I think um, it, it recommends Castillo to some extent, and that's important. And I think one of the things that we found for the policymaking process, that third space where we were hoping to inform decision making, it says that um, there was more interaction, there was a more correlation between cup quality and growing environment than there was between cup quality and variety. That is to say where farmers are growing coffee is more important in this case than what they're growing. Um, And so I think the role for uh, an organization like the Federation or for a government or for a Ministry of Agriculture uh, may be moving forward to provide more information to growers about um, the suitability of their growing environments for cup quality. There were people who went in feeling that they had a pretty pretty much confidence that Catura was going to be a lot better than Castillo in the cup. And when uh, they found that in some cases they preferred Castillo, uh, and when they found that the average cupping scores were very similar, they were surprised. And so um, we went in kind of agnostic. We don't have skin in the game. We don't buy coffees. We don't sell coffees. We serve growers. And our primary objective was to help growers make better uh, decisions by giving them better information. So we need to be careful about not concluding too much from this initial uh, trial. I think it's causing people to re-examine some of their assumptions on the basis of real results. Um, And so I think at the very least, growers and buyers, to the extent that they're able to communicate directly with one another, need to really rethink what the pricing structure is for Katura. Growers who plant it in an in environment of coffee leaf rust are assuming a significant additional production risk and um, the prices they earn has to compensate them, have to compensate them for, for that production risk. Um, and if there is a quality uh, differential uh, in, the, in the perception of the buyer, then that also has to be factored into consideration. I think the as with any new variety, there is an evolution in the perception, and I think, uh, I hope that the Columbia Sensory Trial has um, helped to accelerate that process. We're at an interesting moment right now where there's a lot of discussion about the role of institutions in promoting coffee culture and the role of public investment, and I know it's a debate that Columbia is going through as well, and uh, I think it's very important to uh, continue to preserve investment in research, uh, particularly in a time of climate change where there's more and more pressure and more and more production risk for growers. Breeding is fundamental, and uh, it's it's a function in which we all have to collectively invest.